Welcome to One on One with Expert Flyer. I'm your host, Lisa Kaslin, and today we're speaking with Robert Ahrens, who represents the San Diego Tourism Authority. Welcome, Robert. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Good. So, uh, you know, we're doing this little series on historical destinations. And, you know, when you think about San Diego, I don't know that uh, history necessarily jumps to mind. I mean, I think of beaches, I think of the San Diego Zoo, SeaWorld. But, you know, after chatting with you a little bit, uh, it seems as though there's a lot more to San Diego than we might have expected. So um, talk about that a little bit and uh, particularly um, the, this interesting fact that you, you, were, you were telling me about, which is that San Diego is really sort of the, the birthplace of California. Yeah, it definitely is. And this actually surprises a lot of people. And even for locals, so believe it or not, they don't really know this, but our history goes back 474 years ago. Before the birth of the nation, it was before the Spanish Franciscan friars came and started those, those string of missions. Uh -huh. So in se uh, September 1542, there was a Spanish explorer. His name was Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo. And he sailed a ship up from Mexico and he discovered San Diego Bay. So 1542, I mean, this goes wow. way, way back. Um, it's a very historic day for us and for the state of California because basically he was the first European to set foot on the west coast of what would be the United States mm -hmm. and also the, what would be the state of California. And basically he came in, he saw the bay, kind of looked around, gave it a name, and then he took off. So <laughs> he pretty much just marked it on a map and then we knew this is where San Diego is going to be you know, someday, but he was looking for some new trade routes, so he was continuing north up the California coast and doing some surveying. Um, but today, this is marked on Point Loma, which is right at the entrance to our bay, and it's our only national park, and it's called Cabrillo National Monument. And oh. the name of his ship was the San Salvador. So I like to say that Point Loma is the Plymouth Rock of the West, Okay. And the ship that he sailed, the San Salvador, is sort of the Mayflower of the West. Ah, very cool. And yeah. you just made history again, right? This past Labor Day weekend. Yeah, there was a big festival of sail that the Maritime Museum of San Diego had. It was down on our Embarcadero, uh, right on uh, in downtown there. Uh -huh. They have a full-scale working replica of the San Salvador that they recently completed. It was a $6.2 million project. It's 230 tons. Wow. Um, when you look at the ship, it's pretty grand. I mean, this represents the golden age of discovery, you know, from the uh -huh. 1500s to the 1800s when all these explorers were sailing around the world. Uh -huh. And this replica was finally open to the public. You could walk her decks. You could go on and see the bunks where the sailors would be, uh, the dining table, you know, chicken crates and where the produce and things that they would go and, 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 and go off exploring. Uh, so for the first time, visitors got a chance to to go on board her, the ship, see the exhibits, learn about its significance, because really we had nothing physical except for his landing spot on Point Loma that said, this is Cabrillo, this is his ship. So now we have his ship, and yeah. this is sort of the ambassador now for San Diego. It's going to uh -huh. travel up and down the, the coast of California. Um, oh, in okay. fact, it's... Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask that. Is it is it stationary? Well, apparently, no, it's not. So yeah. that's well, great. Yeah, it was anchored and stationary on the pier this past weekend uh, to kind of give the sneak peek. But what's happening now, it's going to take off going up the coast on a Pacific Heritage Tour. It's stopping in Oxnard, Monterey, and Morro Bay. And at each spot, it's going to give other Californians um, a, an introduction to San Diego's history via the, the San Salvador ship. So it's really fantastic. But then it's going to return in October. It's going to come back to San Diego uh -huh. and it'll be permanently docked at the Maritime Museum. So this will be on display all the time for folks to see along with the Star of India. There's a couple submarines down there. Uh, so it's pretty exciting for us. It'll be there right. year yeah. round. So we're, we're excited because it's, it's a brand new attraction for us. Yeah. But it really puts into a physical ship um, what the, this historic significance for us. So, oh, well, good. Congratulations on that. Yeah. All right. So uh, aside from, you know, seafaring voyages, uh, are there any other um, historical attractions that we may not necessarily know about, but, you know, people who are into all of that may treasure and, and want to kind of explore a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the first that I just mentioned was Cabrillo National Monument. So it's our only national park. It's really beautiful. It's way up high on this peninsula. And there's this overlook. You can see all the way down south to Mexico. It's pretty much a 360 degree view 
downtown Coronado Island, all of San Diego Bay. I mean, it's pretty magnificent. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine just being this lone Spanish ship sailing into the harbor, you know, many hundreds of years ago, what, how dramatic that must have been. Mm -hmm. uh, but today there's tide pools down there. There's an old uh, Point Loma uh, lighthouse you can go exploring. And during World War II, there were some gun batteries that were actually based up there on the cliffs. Mm -hmm. And they've got a couple of those that are actually one of those that's open to the public. And they've got a museum, exhibit. There's whale watching in the winter. You can see the whales migrating just oh, off, off the coast there. Um, they've got a big exhibit room that tells all about Cabrillo with a scale model of the San Salvador. But like I said, now we've actually got the mm. actual ship, a, a replica of it. So it's, that's <laughs> cool. Uh, over in Old Town, so you've heard of Old Town, San Diego. Mm -hmm. um, the Franciscan Spanish missionaries, they came in about 200 years later in 1769, and they settled up on another hill. It's called Presidio Hill. It's right overlooking Old Town. And on the top of this hill sits a mission-style building. Uh, it's actually more modern. It was built in the 20s, I believe. It's called the Junipero Serra Museum. And mm -hmm. it actually marks the spot where there is a presidio or a fort, a Spanish fort, mm -hmm. and then the original mission site of the Mission San Diego de Acala. Mm -hmm. And then down the hill from there is Old Town State Historic Park. So imagine like the oldie timey western town with a big open plaza, adobe buildings. They saved a lot of those original buildings from the uh, early to late 1800s, and that's an Old Town State Park. Mm -hmm. And then if you go a little bit north of San Diego down Mission Valley, um, there is a mission, a real mission, it's called Mission San Diego de Acala, because basically what they did um, in 1774 is they moved the mission. It was up on this hill. They decided, let's get closer to the water, which makes a lot of sense, and the San Diego River was there in Mission Valley. So they essentially moved it and rebuilt it. Um, at this mission and it's still there today. It's in the hustle and bustle of this big, you know, we're a pretty big metropolis, mm -hmm. hotels and shopping centers, but up on this little hill is the original mission and it's a serious step back in time to the 1700s. The chapel's still there, the original adobe building. There's an excavation site in the back where the monastery was. Uh, there's a graveyard, a uh, little museum. It's really, really cool because it's a, it's a serious step back in time. Okay. And then lastly, really close to that, to that mission in Mission Valley is Mission Trails Regional Park. And it had the original um, old mission dam that supplied water going down six miles away to the mission. Mm -hmm. uh, but today there's like hiking and mountain biking, camping, boating. Um, but it kind of represents, you know, the way the, uh, the, the, the Franciscan friars were supplying water basically uh, to the mission. So those are just some of the sites. Very cool, very cool. All right, yeah. so uh, once you're done trekking around, taking your history lessons, what are some of the, um, you know, tried and true uh, destinations and attractions for folks who, you know, okay, want to kick back, want to relax, want to take in some yeah. beautiful vistas, you know, where do we go, what do we do? Yeah, I would say our 70 miles of beaches, we've got a lot of coastline. All the beaches are free and open to the public and accessible to the public. And one of the best and one of my favorite actually is La Jolla. And if you've never mm. been to La Jolla Cove, it is seriously pretty as a postcard. Turquoise water, white sand beaches, these little alcoves. Uh -huh. It's fantastic. Stand up paddle boarding, kayakers, snorkeling. Oh, um, right now the water's been really warm, so the snorkelers uh -huh. are out. The waters are nice and clear. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really pretty if you can walk around there. And then up at Mount Soledad, which overlooks the village of La Jolla, um, again, it's this 360 degree view. You can see all the way to downtown, to Mexico, and then looking north up the coast of, of, of San Diego. Um, and then Balboa Park, um, you had mentioned yes. the zoo. That's where the San Diego Zoo is located. Uh -huh. And they've got a, something called the California Tower. It's about 200 feet high. Hasn't been open since the 1930s. It's just it kind of sat there, but we didn't have accessibility to go up to the top. Mm -hmm. Now you can go to the top, and it's really beautiful. You can look out over all Balboa Park. Um, it's beautiful. And I always tell folks, if you can, because I was mentioning Cabrillo and this in the bay, mm -hmm. uh, take a harbor excursion. We've got the uh, mm -hmm. flagship cruises and hornblower cruises, and mm -hmm. they offer these one, two-hour uh, cruises along, around the bay. But to see the city from the water, this really is all oh, about San Diego. It's beautiful. And they do go right off the coast there, off of Point Loma. And then looking back and seeing the coast of San Diego from the ocean, 
Uh, it's pretty spectacular. I always recommend that. Wonderful. All right. So um, let's say somebody was planning a trip this fall. Are there any festivals or any special events that are happening that someone may want to use as an excuse to come out there? <laughs> sure. Um, there is um, something out in our back country, and it's called the Julian Apple Festival. Um, believe it or not, we've got an old west town where the gold rush came to Southern California. Ah. And it's a little mountain town called Julian. It's about 6,000 feet in elevation. And it's, it's uh, got apple orchards. You go apple picking. They've got gold mines that you can actually explore, do some gold panning. Uh, so Julian's a lot of fun. That happens every fall, September through about October. Even the locals go out there for some apple pie and, and apple picking. Uh -huh. um, but then the Cabrillo Festival is coming up. Um, okay. End of this month, September 30th to October 1st. Mm -hmm. And what they do is this really cool reenactment of Cabrillo landing on Point Loma, planting oh, the wow. flag at the beach there and, and claiming it for Spain, even mm -hmm. though Spain wanted to come back for, like I said, a couple hundred years later. But it really <laughs> incorporates um, the Native American tradition, because he, he encountered some tribes when he when he landed uh -huh. uh, Mexican Portuguese and Spanish cultures all melded together oh. with uh, music and food booths and vendors um, mm. it's really a fun event oh great okay so we want to have you back again this is wonderful got a lot going on there in San Diego we do. We do. <laughs> <laughs> all right well listen thank you so much for your time Robert it was great having you all right thanks so much okay bye-bye